Hi Scorpios, let's talk about what you can expect from May 2024. Um, we are starting with on the 2nd of May, Pluto in Aquarius is going retrograde until the 2nd of September and it's happening in your fourth house. Um, this is a very transformative period for Scorpios because the fourth house is a pivotal house, an incredibly important house uh, in the zodiac. So the fourth house is the house connected with home, the home that you were born into, the family that you were born into, the mother, the mother figure, uh, fem feminine energy, female energy, uh, and females in general, and also with uh, the family roots and history, family land, mother language, uh, also with emotions, like deep-rooted emotions um, that are connected with the family and with the family tree. Uh, so this, I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling all zodiac signs, but I'm going to tell uh, Scorpius also, but uh, <laughs> Pluto is karma. So Pluto and Saturn are karmic planets, wherever Pluto is, to me it's karmic. So here, whatever it happens, it's karmic. Second, wherever Pluto is, there is issues with trust, control, and manipulation. So these th three things Scorpios will have to deal with in this area of the fourth house. And third, wherever Pluto is, because Pluto is the Phoenix energy, so Pluto is transformation. Pluto is the phoenix energy, burning to the ashes so that burning to the ashes so that from the ashes, nothing is left, from the ashes there is a rebirth, there is, there is a, a newer leveled up version. So with this Pluto here in the fourth house, for all of us, this Pluto retrograde is quietness, introspective time. But also, this is a period to learn from our lessons, learn from our mistakes, so that we do not repeat the same things again and again and again. But with this Pluto here in the fourth house, I think for Scorpios, it's going to be more explosive than probably... I don't think for anybody else it's going to be so explosive as it's for Scorpios because Scorpios are dealing with very karmic things at this time. They are changing their home front. They are changing their family situation. They are changing their relationships with their mother, with their female uh, females in the family. For example, their grandmother, their sisters, their cousins, their female, the female family members. Uh, they are changing and they're changing in a way that is Pluto is, as we've talked about, the, 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 the Phoenix energy. They're burning down things, okay? They, and this is, I mean, it's not going to happen for two days, okay? This is a process that it's going to happen from the, uh, it's going to start from the 2nd of May until the 2nd of September. Scorpios are going to observe so many issues, so many trust control and manipulation issues that they are going to change their family and their home and their house. Maybe for some of them it means that they are going to they're going to move away, for example, from their family. Maybe for some of them it means that they're going to relocate to another country. Uh, they're going to change house. They're going to, for example, uh, renovate their house, uh, their home that they are in. They're going to completely change it because it's Pluto, right? It's burning everything down to rebuild it again. Better. Maybe they will get into so many fights and arguments with their family members that they're not going to speak again. Or they're going to have those conflicts and have those arguments and then build a better communication style so that they can communicate better. There is something in the 
family in the house of Scorpios that can no longer be. And this is very, it may not be obvious to Scorpios at the moment, but it will become obvious until the 2nd of September. And it will be very obvious then, until then, right? The Scorpios are going to ab absorb a lot of things and they're going to be like, hey, 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 you know what? I didn't think of this before, but you know, this is not okay. <laughs> this, we cannot continue this way, okay? This is no more, no. So Scorpios may be very chill at this time. <laughs> they may be living their lives and they may be even, they may not know, they may be unaware of things. But Pluto will open their eyes, slowly but surely. Again, it may not be so dramatic as I'm explaining it, because it will happen throughout a few months, from the 2nd of May until the 2nd of September. So it may be a natural, gradual process. But it may also be very dramatic and explosive. Right? If Scorpios are fighting every day with uh, their families, it will be a dramatic, explosive thing. So, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it, it depends. Um, again, this is positive transformation. This is positive transformation. Um, it may seem, because it's Pluto, so it may seem drastic and extreme and negative, because it's Pluto, but Pluto transforms the bad to good. Okay, this is what Pluto does. So maybe in the beginning it, it, it seems very negative and it seems like, oh, for example, I don't know how we're going to go through this. How are we going to get through this? Like, this is impossible. We're going to be stuck here for a while. But Pluto is transformation. So positive transformation. So Scorpios are positively transforming this. On the 7th of May, new moon in Taurus in the 7th house. This is very positive for you, Scorpio. Um, first of all, the opposite sign of Scorpio is Taurus. So you're, you're like, you're receiving a, a, a gift, right? You're receiving a gift from your opposite sign, which is Taurus. Second of all, uh, yeah, second of all, Taurus is a materialistic sign. This thing that uh, is the new moon, uh, it's going to be in the material world. You're going to receive something in the material world. And third, it's the seventh house. The seventh house is the house of partnerships, um, marriages, open enemies, business partners. So to me, Scorpio, you have to get out of the house on the 7th of May if you're single. To me, it just seems like you're going to need your future marriage partner, your future business partner, your future romantic long-term partner. You're going to meet a person who is going to be your partner in an intimate partnership. In an intimate partnership. So... If you're single, get out and mingle. <laughs> if you're in a relationship, uh, to me, this is a very positive, abundant time. You may, you may level up, in, uh, not level up, but you may go into the next stage of your relationship. You may get engaged, you may get uh, married, you may uh, welcome a new baby, you may expand your family in some way, you may expand your relationship, you may start living together with a person. Um, so this is very positive for both single people and people in relationships. Also with business partners, this is great. This is abundant, lucky energy, positive. Uh, on the 15th of May, Mercury in Taurus in the seventh house. Um, Mercury in Taurus, Taurus is your opposite sign, Scorpio, as we've talked about, and Mercury in Taurus, you are understanding a lot because of your opposite sign. So you are um, seeing how to be more practical with your communication style, how to be more 
sweet and charming. You're also seeing how to be more um, pragmatic, you know, into this real world. Uh, and this is happening in your seventh house, the house of, as we've talked about, uh, <clears throat> intimate uh, partnerships, um, marriages, also open enemies. So this is um, how are you communicating in your partnerships? How are you com communicating with your partner? Um, you may be starting to communicate with your um, partner in a very practical way. You know, for example, okay, if, if for example, if, if, if we want to buy a property, we need this money saved. How much money can you save? How much money can I save? Let's do the calculation. It's a very matter of fact, but it's a very practical, about practical material things. Okay. At the same time, Mercury in Taurus is very creative. Uh, Mercury in Taurus. I think also uh, it's very romantic because Taurus is ruled by Venus. Venus is the plant of love and beauty. Okay. It's a very charming transit. It's a very romantic, creative. Uh, it can be incredibly sweet, incredibly... Um, Sugary, <laughs> sugary is the word, but uh, here you may be um, very charming with your words, very beautiful communication. You may you you may uh, attract a lot of people with your verbal and nonverbal communication. Not a lot of people, but you may be attracting the right people for you with your communication. V uh, Venus entering into Gemini on the 23rd of May in your 8th house. Um, so, Venus in Gemini is, Venus is the planet of love, beauty and finances. Going into Gemini, a very light um, transit, uh, airy, social, multitasking, meeting a lot of people. And then it's happening in your 8th house. <laughs> So for you, all of this, all of the, all of all of this light and air and social, social, social thing, it's not so light and airy. Okay, for you it's not because it's happening in your eighth house. The eighth house is probably one of the heaviest houses, if not the heaviest house in the zodiac, um, in astrology. It's just there are a lot of heavy topics. To be discussed in the eighth house. The eighth house rules debt, it rules shared resources, meaning other people's money, it rules um, sex, intimacy, taboo topics, secrets, mysteries, human psychology. So you see how it's heavier, right? It's heavier in your eighth house. Um, with this Venus in Gemini, you may be bonding with people on a very intimate level, on a very deeper intimate level. Yes, you may be, because it's Venus in Gemini, so yes, you may be talking with multiple people, you may be liking multiple people, crushing on multiple people, but you are, you are not doing this on a super, superficial level. You are digging deeper. You are connecting on a deeper level with, with people. Also, because it's Venus in the 8th house, you may be receiving some, some money from people. You have, old, you have loaned some money to some people, for example, when you're re receiving it back. Okay, You're receiving something back because it's Venus. You're attracting the other people's money. Uh, on the 25th of May, Jupiter is entering Gemini into your 8th house. From the 25th of May until the 9th of June 2025, Jupiter is going to be into Gemini. So, in your 8th house. Um, this is fun because it's, 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 it's in weird directions. Okay? Uh, Jupiter in Gemini, Gemini, as we've talked about, Jupiter, let's start from the beginning, shall we? Jupiter is the planet of luck, uh, expansion, growth, progress. Okay? Gemini is mutable air. Sociable, changeable, adaptive, quick, super quick, intellectual. Okay, so we are expanding this 80 social uh, quick sign energy that is Gemini. 
but it's happening in your 8th house. So the 8th house is one of the deepest, heaviest houses, as we've talked about, in astrology. So this is happening in shared resources, other people's money, death, physical death, um, sex, human psychology, um, taboo topics, intimacy, mysteries, uh, research also. So this is a very heavy house. So here with this Jupiter in Gemini, uh, it may go into so many different directions <laughs> with this Jupiter in Gemini in the 8th house. Um, it may be that you want to build a life with a partner because it's the 8th house, it's the in intimacy house, okay? You want to you want to build a life, you want to partner up with this Gemini because Gemini is like two people <laughs> and more than two people. So you want to partner up with, uh, you want to partner up and you want to build a life, you want to build something with your partner, okay? You don't want to do this alone. You also may be very lucky and um, be abundant when it, com when it comes to shared resources or other, other people's money. You may be approved for loans or credits. You may have your money back from, you have loaned your money to other people and now people are giving back your money. Uh, you may also inherit money or inherit property. This is one of the kind of the biggest um, signs, not signs, but you know, so one of the biggest things with Jupiter in the 8th house, you are receiving from kind of negative, not negative, but you are receiving from, you're receiving good things from bad situations, okay? You are receiving, for example, inheritance, which is good, from somebody dying, meaning bad things. Okay, you're receiving good things from bad things. Okay, this kind of Jupiter in the eighth house, um, because it's 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 difficult to explain. So I'm going to kind of give examples of what it may mean, right? For example, you may be divorcing, but which is a bad thing. But you are receiving, for example, financial settlement. You're receiving financial help. So this is the good thing that is happening. You may be, for example. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, examples like this, uh, but you are you may be very blessed and lucky in situations where other people are like, oh, this is a bad situation, this is a bad sad situation, and you're like, yes, but the silver lining, I have like Jupiter in the eighth house, I'm receiving things that I have not thought about this before. For example. Um, you're also very curious about human psychology at this time. You may in, enroll into courses or start uh, reading a lot about human psychology. You may be uh, deepening your um, interest into death, sex, um, research, mysteries, uh, all those, um, all those kind of. Um, Crime, <laughs> crime shows, uh, crime TV shows, for example, for, for example, um, all of these things. One of the things that you have to be careful about, I think, with this Jupiter in the eighth house, is that whatever Jupiter touches, it expands. So having here the Having here the um, the house that is um, having here the ha having here the house that is transformative, it's 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 um, extreme. It's obsessive. The eighth house. It's mysterious. You have to be aware that you may be you may become obsessive more easily than usual. You 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 usually you can become more easily obsessive than other people but now even now with jupiter in the eighth house jupiter may expand your obsession so you have to be careful 
you have to be really careful about this. Uh, have a great May and let's talk about Sagittarius now. Thank you for being with me. Hi Sagittarius, let's talk about what you can expect from this May. For, so, first things first. Pluto in Aquarius is going retrograde from the 2nd of May until the 2nd of September. This is happening in your third house. Now, uh, Pluto, wherever Pluto is, I'm going to tell everybody this. <laughs> I've been telling this to all zodiac signs. Wherever Pluto is, uh, it's karma to me. This is karma. Uh, so whatever it's happening, it's karma. Second, uh, wherever Pluto is, there is issues with trust, control, and manipulation. So we have to be careful about this thing. Third, wherever Pluto is, there is transformation because Pluto is the sign, Pluto is the energy of the phoenix. So Pluto is burning things down to the ashes so that it may be rebuilt again. Uh, but it's leaving nothing behind. Okay, everything is burned down so that from the ashes, a second, uh, a better version is re being re reborn. Um, so here with this Pluto retrograde period from the 2nd of May until the 2nd of September, it's a moment of quiet, introspective time. It's a moment for ourselves to be self-aware, self-observant, so that we can see our mistakes, we can learn our lessons, so we don't, we don't repeat the same things again and again. And all of this is happening in your third house. The third house is connected with communication. It's connected with the throat. It's connected with um, information, how we gather information, how we spread that information. So here with this Pluto uh, going retrograde in the third house, for Sagittarius, it's a huge moment of not only self-awareness but also realization of how important their communication is. Um, Sagittarius may see that their, their words matter, their verbal and non-verbal communication really matters and it really matters. Like usually all people, you know, that's how we understand each other, we communicate. But here with Sagittarius, and especially now with this Pluto retrograde, Sagittarius will see that their words really matter to people. And they have to be extra, double extra, triple extra careful about the way they're communicating. Because they don't want any miscommunications, they don't want to offend people, they don't want to insult people. The way they are communicating is, is very heavy and people are listening to them because people respect their communication, okay? They, they respect their information, their communication. So with Sagittarius, um, maybe they'll go back and forth about realizing that, their, for example, their communica communi communication is not that great they need to work on it, they need to really think twice and, and or twice, tr thrice about the words they're using, the tone of voice they're using, um, you know, the way they're speaking, the way they're communicating verbally and non-verbally. So incredibly important, huge transformation here. Also, it may be huge transformation because Sagittarius maybe is learning a new language or they're learning a new way to communicate with people. Uh, they may also be learning new ways how to gather information and how to spread that information. Uh, they're having maybe second thoughts, they're going back and forth, they're analyzing how they've done this before, how they can do it in the future so that it's better, so that it's, you know, it's, it's more into their brand, into their style, and all of these things. Also, the third house rules siblings, neighbors and neighborhoods, and short distance travels and short trips. 
and short courses actually. So this is also a very transformative time for Sagittarius' siblings. It may be a very transformative time. Um, yeah. With this Pluto here, it's quite a transformation. It is quite a transformation. Um, yeah. On the 7th of May, we have a new moon in Taurus in the 6th house. Uh, in your 6th house. Uh, the new moon in Taurus is abundance. It's material abundance, it's growth, it's stability happening in your sixth house, meaning that <clears throat> there will be something that is abundant in your everyday life. Okay, you may receive a sal salary increase in your everyday job, you may receive some kind of <clears throat> you may receive some kind of a uh, present or a gift that will help you in your everyday routine or habits. Uh, you may receive something that is very positive for you in your everyday life. Uh, <clears throat> on the 15th of May, we have Mercury and Taurus happening in your sixth house again. You're starting to communicate again. Uh, we all are starting to communicate in a very practical way <clears throat> with this Mercury and Taurus, but you're also communicating in the sixth house. Okay, the sixth house is the everyday house. Health, fit, physical body, food, uh, fitness, colleagues, everyday job, and uh, pets. So here with this Mercury and Taurus here, you're, you're very communicated here in this house. Uh, from the 15th of May forward. Very communicative, you're very talkative, you're back and forth with your colleagues, you're, you're, you're communicating a lot. Um, you are very creative when it comes to your everyday job, your everyday habits, your everyday routine. Maybe you will become more curious about how can you make it better. You may be talking a lot with people about their own kind of everyday routine, everyday habits. You may be also talking a lot about all those things that um, are ruled by the sixth house. So physical health, physical body, fitness, food, um, all of these things and pets also so you may be talking a lot about these things you may be talking with your colleagues a lot but you may be talking about the food the the, the fitness or kind of the workout routine that they have you're you, you may be very communicative uh, and you're getting very uh, creative with ideas during this time from the 23rd of may venus is entering gemini and it's happening in your seventh house so this is really great because uh, Gemini is the opposite sign of Sa Sagittarius. So Venus is entering into your, into your opposite sign. And not only that, but it's entering in your seventh house. So the seventh house is the other person, <laughs> right? The seventh house is intimate partnerships, marriages, long-term um, relationships, business partners and open enemies also. So here with this Venus in Gemini, Venus in the seventh house, it's a great position for love. If you're single, this is kind of, you are so attractive. You are so beautiful to people. You may be attracted to a lot of people. Okay, Venus in Gemini, it's not only multitasking, but it's with, you are liking, you're crushing on multiple people. So you're meeting a lot of people. If you're single, it's a very, it's a very positive time. If you're in a relationship, it's e maybe even a better time <laughs> because um, Venus in the seventh house is just you want to be loved. You want to love. It's just this period of time where love is on your mind, love is on your heart. You just you you want the romance, you want the the love, you want the drama, you want the um, all of it. So it's a very romantical time for you. Um, and even if you're single, you're bringing that into your all, all kinds of your relationships where you're like love. <laughs> you know, you're like one beating heart of love. Okay. Um, the 25th of May, Jupiter is entering Gemini in the 7th house. 
again i think this is very beneficial for you because jupiter is the planet of luck growth and progress and expansion gemini is your opposite sign so you are going to learn a lot of things from your opposite sign um Jupiter is in Gemini from the 25th of May until the 9th of June 2025. So, this is happening in your 7th house. Uh, as we've talked about, marriage partners, uh, long-term relationships, business partners, intimate relationships. So, um, it may be a huge sign that you are going to meet your partner. Uh, by partner, I mean intimate partner uh, for a long-term relationship or your future marriage partner or your uh, business partner. Uh, it may be a huge time for you romantically. You may need the person for you. You may need your business partner that you may start a business with, for example. Um, you may be going into a different phase of your life with your partner you may be um, engage, getting engaged getting married this is a huge sign for getting married because the seventh house is the traditional um, marriage and marriage partners so jupiter here is bringing all of the luck and all of the expansion and growth and progress so if it's not a marriage it's some kind of it's some kind of this you know, and, and it's some kind of, for example, for business partners, you may sign a contract, a business contract uh, for business partners. Uh, but when it comes to love, a marriage or something like a marriage, uh, entering into a stable, loyal, honest, long-term relationship. So this is really amazing for Sagittarius. If you're already into a relationship, it's going into the next stage of whatever you are, getting engaged, getting married, starting to live with uh, your partner, uh, having a baby, having a second baby, having a third baby, baby having a grandbaby, like grandchild, um, having, you know, it's a very positive and incredibly lucky energy for about a year now. You will feel like you have wings because of this person, because of this relationship, because of the stage of your relationship. Everything in your relationship will be lucky. Everything in kind of this department will be abundant, will be lucky, will be protected, will be supported. So if you're looking for uh, your partner, I think it's a very blessed <laughs> time. Even if it's not your kind of um, even if it's not, um, you don't meet, for example, your future uh, marriage partner, the people that you're going to meet are very beneficial for you. Very, benefic very beneficial for you. Um, very good luck. Very good luck. Um, yeah, just good people. Just good people in your life. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, let's talk about Capricorn now. Thank you so much for being with me. Hi Capricorns, let's talk about what you can expect from May 2024. So, on the 2nd of May, Pluto in Aquarius is going retrograde uh, until the 2nd of September. And all of this is happening in your second house. So, Pluto going retrograde in Aquarius is a period of time where we all should get quiet and introspective and observe ourselves and learn from our mistakes, learn our lessons so that we do not repeat the same things again and again and again. At the same time, wherever Pluto is, Pluto is karmic. Pluto is karma. Pluto and Saturn to me are the two planets, karmic planets in the zodiac. So wherever I see Pluto, I think this is karmic. <laughs> um also wherever pluto is there is issues with trust control and manipulation so we have to be very aware with wherever pluto is there might be issues with trust control and manipulation 
at the same time last but not least pluto is transformation so pluto is the the energy of the phoenix pluto is the phoenix that burns to the ashes everything that it leaves nothing behind so that it it will be reborn from the ashes so with this pluto going retrograde in your second house the second house is the house of money simply put uh, the second house is all the material possessions that we can possess it's also our, our our personal finances okay it's not the eighth house the eighth house is other people's money this is my own like it's my own uh hard-earned money uh and also it's the house connected with self-worth self-value it's also the house that is connected with self uh talents natural talents and skills and resources so how are we going like this is a lot of going back and forth about all of these things uh pluto going retrograde in the second house capricorns may feel like nothing is simple about their finances nothing is maybe they've thought for example that they may become million a millionaire for example and they right now are like going back and forth going up and down left and right going thinking about different things at the same time testing testing other things so it's not so simple as it's not so simple it's not so direct and straightforward as capricorns were thinking and now it's a lot of back and forth maybe they've made a lot of mistakes maybe they are going back rethinking their strategy changing their strategy changing the strategy strategy again because it's a retrograde it's not direct okay it's not straightforward motion it's like going everywhere all at once so with this pluto retrograde in the second house it's a lot of looking at and especially, especially when it comes to self-worth, looking at the self-worth and rethinking and thinking it again and assessing the natural skills of people and how much they're worth. This is very difficult to kind of get a sense of. Um, next, on the 7th of May, new moon in Taurus in the 5th house. So... New moon in Taurus is abundance, growth, and stability. The fifth house, the fifth house is connected with fun, hobbies. It's also connected with uh, inner child, children, and also with creativity. It's also connected with casual romance and dating, the first stages of, of romance. So this here, it's a very abundant time. This is a very... We've talked about this with Virgo when it came to the new moon in Taurus. When it when there is um, an energy between an earth sign and an earth sign, it materializes in the real world. Okay, so for 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 Capricorns, the new moon in Taurus is something that materialistically it happens materialistically. Uh, maybe it's uh, some kind of good luck with uh, a hobby. Maybe it's a gift that is. A hobby okay you're receiving a gift from one of your hobbies maybe somebody is giving you an experience that will turn into a hobby for example they're gifting you for example painting with wine while drinking wine and you really enjoy it and so you, you start painting as a hobby uh, or somebody sends sends you to a music lesson or a guitar playing lesson or something and this becomes your a hobby from now on so this may be like it's a very materialistic the new moon in Taurus it will bring you abundance in a very realistic materialistic way uh, if you have children I think this also may be very beneficial energy abundant energy good luck energy from your children you're receiving a lot of good luck from your children um on the 15th of may mercury in taurus going into the fifth house in your fifth house so the same thing as we've talked about mercury in taurus our communication becoming practical and pragmatic and also very beautiful okay taurus is ruled by venus mercury in taurus it's a very very beautiful communication style 
uh, in the fifth house. So you are communicating a lot about uh, if you have children, you're, you're talking a lot about your children. If you are planning on having children, you are talking maybe with other parents about children, about, uh, you know, different aspects of, of having children, of be, being a parent and all of these things. Um, if you don't have any children, I think children will be very inspiring and motivating to you. So you may be looking around to children in your life. Uh, children are going to be very inspiring to you. Um, also, fun hobbies. Uh, you are talking about your hobbies, you're talking about how you're having fun, you're very vocal about these things. You may be verbal or non-verbal, you're, you're, you're creative at this time, you, are, you have a lot of ideas at this moment, so this is very creative to you. Um, on the 23rd of May, Venus is entering Gemini in the 6th house. So, this is... Uh, interesting <laughs> because the sixth house is the everyday house the sixth house is the house of everyday habits the everyday routine it's the everyday job it's the uh, the colleagues pets but it's also uh, physical body physical health uh, food fitness or working out uh, and stuff like that so here with the Venus and Gemini I think you're just going to become incredibly attractive at your job everyday job um, you're going to be kind of the favorite uh, colleague you may be the favorite team member uh, the favorite kind of boss the favorite manager you also may find love at your work <laughs> it may happen um, at your job um, so you also may have a crush on multiple people because Venus is in Gemini Let's not forget that. <laughs> so you may be becoming very attractive at your work, uh, at your job, but you also may attract a lot of love there, right? You may fall in love. You may have, um, uh, you may start a relationship with your colleague or with your manager or something like that. Um, on the 25th of May, Jupiter in Gemini, Jupiter is entering Gemini from the 25th of May until the 9th of June 2025, so about a year. And Jupiter in Gemini is going to be in your 6th house. Uh, this is, I think, very incredibly positive for you because at the 6th house, as we've talked about, we're going to repeat it, the 6th house is the house of the everyday habits and routine. So... As you Capricorn know, uh, the devil is in the details and I firmly believe that the sixth house is one of the most pivotal houses because if you want to achieve the dream, which is the twelfth house, you need to work with your sixth house. You need your everyday habits and practices and routines in order to build your twelfth house, which is the dreams. Um, so on the uh, from the 25th of May, with this Jupiter in Gemini in the sixth house, there is a lot of growth and expansion in your everyday routine. You may have finally reached a routine that is perfect for you, or you will reach the perfect routine for you. Uh, you may be very abundant in your everyday life, in your everyday lifestyle. You may also be very abundant. Uh, at your and lucky at your everyday job with your colleagues your colleagues may be very lucky uh, they may be very abundant to you they may be bringing you a lot of good energy and good luck uh, Jupiter in the sixth house is also the physical body and, and health uh, physical health so here you may be very positive about your physical body and your physical health you may be starting a new fitness regime food regime a workout kind of routine that you will you will keep you yourself in check you will keep yourself happy optimistic and also healthy which is probably the most important thing um, it's also connected with pets so if you have pets they're bringing you a lot of good energy a lot of luck if you don't have pets, 
maybe you get pets <laughs> maybe you get a pet um maybe by accident maybe you 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 have already planned for it but they will be very lucky for you they will be very lucky um it will be they will be very beneficial to you um thank you for being with me let's talk about next time now thank you